Understanding art is an appreciation by itself. It is the opportunity to look, to interpret, to marvel. It has creativity and personality in every work. But where this story changes is with the artists and how they got here. Mike, my life changed forever. Two months and 18 days after my high school graduation. The hour I borrowed a friend's motorcycle for a joy ride around Lake Calhoun. Subsequently, my life turned upside down when a drunk driver turned into my lane, you know, breaking my neck, and I became a quadriplegic, paralyzed from my shoulders down. The year was 1970, and Don Banya would not walk again. One moment, I was an active suburban teenager, and on the next, I was forced into a world and viewed by many as a non-person. He struggled for the next seven years. Anger became the norm. His change came in a spiritual sense. And I came to realize that Jesus Christ is not a crutch, but he is a life support system. With the attitude adjustment, he began to understand what he could do. And what he could do with his mouth is remarkable. He creates, and he is meticulous, and he is filled with a passion. Oh, art was a, a, a way for me to express myself. How I first got involved in, in mouth art was way back in rehab at the U of M, Rehab 4. And it was in, in occupational therapy when the therapist said, hey, Don, do you like to draw? Have you ever painted? See, here at the Courage Kenny Rehabilitation Center, there is a program that helps promote what can be. It culminates each year with an art show where people with disabilities stand center stage. I think that it's a great opportunity for um, folks with disabilities to be able to display their artwork, have people actually admire the artwork and a place where it can be sold so they can benefit from their artwork. This one right here. Laura Kantanakis has a different story. She was gainfully employed until she was injured in an accident twice. I, through a series of two automobile crashes, um, developed a, a brain injury that brought me to a place of um, inability to perform my previous job, multitasking. I worked for a stock market. It was after a six-month leave and um, a second accident that I had had out here in the Midwest. My first one was in Pennsylvania. Um, I was hit by a tractor trailer, log truck, and my ribs were broken, my head was cut open. She battled to maintain her job at a brokerage firm, but could not keep up. The brain injury left her down, way down. It seemed like I was very emotional with lots of tears and um, just from the lack of understanding. Sure, frustration. Uh, huh? Frustration. She found a different type of artistic outlet behind the camera as a photographer. Photography came because a dear friend of mine gave me a camera at the church I was going to, and my faith walk became very strong. Um, I pressed into God so much because I felt so alone in my state. And she too is a part of the show where artists are varied and committed. It's everybody from, you know, there's children that are involved in the art show to 90 year old people that are involved in this art show. And when you look at the, the work of art, it's just awe inspiring. That's what Courage Kenny Institute is supposed to be about. Restoring hope, giving opportunity, creating a freedom once lost. They're helping me by having a safe place to come a place that other people don't judge me or expect more of me than I can give. Um, a place that I see brokenness, but I also see healing. Jill Ness was on the East Coast, married with a child and working on her master's degree. But there were two issues that caused the setback. I first became disabled um, when I one day, I had been having back trouble, and then one time I realized I couldn't lift up my foot. Went to the doctor two days later, ended up in surgery, and was told I had the back of a 75-year-old woman. 
at the age of 33. I also was diagnosed with depression when I was 17, and so I've been dealing with that all my life. Her marriage ended. She was diagnosed with panic disorder. And then someone stepped in. How I got involved in art was an accident and actually a dare. I had a rise worker who was coming to my house. He would watch me finger paint with my daughter and stuff. And he'd be like, Jill, you seem really creative. You know, I know you write and stuff, but, um, and I said, well, actually, I haven't written and I've had writer's block for a decade. And he said, well, you seem really creative. Why don't you try art? When she got involved, she got motivated. It opened her mind to what could be. She felt invigorated by possibility. First of all, it gave me my creativity back mm -hmm. um, because I realized that my writer's block was, was kind of self-imposed because I always thought that it had to be good and then I lost touch with my writing process because I hadn't been writing. And this show is the product of someone more than five decades ago who felt the pain created the idea of art as a healing mechanism that leads to self-esteem. Margaret Anderson was diagnosed with polio in 1953, and during her time at Sister Kenny Institute, now Courage Kenny Institute, with the merger of Courage Center and Sister Kenny, um, she, was, she relied on a ventilator to breathe, and she learned how to paint with her mouth. So on this night, the artists can feel the appreciation of what they have done. The dose of confidence that comes from accomplishment. It's, it's wonderful. And here I am, a veteran. I can still come back, do some volunteering, and encourage some of these young pups. And, uh, and uh, I'm hoping I can be a, a motivational help for them. Because these artists have learned that life is not over or defined because of disability, it is rather a new opportunity. As Ernest Hemingway once said, life breaks everyone, but some grow stronger at the broken places. This night, well, it's a microcosm of the people, of the program, of the premise, that things can happen that alter one's plan, and we can only try to embrace it. It's all about getting back to living life. That's really what this place is all about. Getting back to living life. It might be a new life. life. Yep. But there is a life. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.